Hello and welcome back to another Dragon Weekend. Channeling some Jeffrey Star there. <laughs> so uh, today we're working on a two-headed dragon here. Ooh. So he's almost done in a uh, sense in a way. Like we've got the body, the tail, and the split tail, and the two heads made. There's probably four hours left here. <laughs> okay, so now we have to connect the body to the head. Oh, but first we need to attach the final two scales here to the top of the body. Basically, be the near twin of uh, Charlotte and Nancy O'Casper here. Octavius watching too. Just chilling. Just chilling. So, what we're going to be doing is more or less eh, shuffling our chainmail kit partially off the table, which leaves me a little bit leery. We're going to flip over C and C here, and we're going to basically give her. <laughs> Let's have at it, shall we? two songs together there uh, that started as Tamara and it ended as finishing up so hey we're finishing up a dragon that works and well you're related to Tamara Tamara's one of my dragons gave to Ophelia a friend of mine from Winnipeg <clears throat> okay so how do I want to attach these scales now comes the trickety part where I'm not sure what to do Hmm, how do I do it here? Because there has to be kind of a ring in between somewhere, because I don't have the scales connecting to each other. They do seem to be forward, just a little touch touch. So, we're probably going to need quarter inch rings for this one. Oh. You see, this is the best part, and I apologize for the lighting too, by the way. This is the best lighting that I can get in the room, and you know, we've got sun coming in from this side, and this is the angle that I have to work with right at the second, because I don't want to rearrange the entire room to do a recording here. Because, <laughs> like, okay, I've got, like, two hours to record today before I have to go to work. I have an evening shift today. And it's like, do I want to spend, like, 45 minutes to an hour reorganizing the room to get slightly better lighting, which point the sun will have moved anyway? <laughs> so, you get this. Sun wouldn't move that much, I suppose. Still. Long term goal, I'm going to have a really, really mobile room. Right now, there's still a pile of stuff like literally right beside me, and I think you can see a little bit of the background here. Ah, that thing. Ah, there you go, clean up your view, view a little. <laughs> yeah, my room is still chaos for the most part, but we're getting there. We're getting there. <laughs> attach the two scales here. Like, I can try to compare it to Charlemagne and Cleopatra, but I can't really make out what I did underneath there. And generally speaking, with unusual dragons like this, I just wing it and see what happens. But I do see that I used quarter inch rings there instead of the 316, so let's go back to that and try a quarter inch ring there. So that'll let us kind of uh, split the scales here, and then we can have two of them side by side. It's a little bit different than if they have shoulder scales, 
Because, you know, there's a whole head in between the two scales. Okay, not really so much. Sorry. You're all gone that one. Hmm. How do I do a regular split here? So that's essentially what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Alright, those are added way after, kind of in between two regular scales, so that kind of doesn't apply either. <laughs> and then those are unique too. close this scale is being to the center. I don't like that. Nope, don't like it. Get rid of it. Uh, so much of this, the majority of this video until I get to the legs, if I get to the legs in the next few hours, is basically going to be trial and erroring on the neck. <laughs> yeah, seriously, when you think about it, this dragon is going to have 10 hours of work put into it, whereas a regular dragon has 3 hours of work, you know, plus adoption papers. So, like, I'm charging the same price for all of my dragons. So that's why there's not as many unusual dragons. Because I'm selling 10 hours of work for 50 bucks, and I'm selling 3 hours of work for 50 bucks. <laughs> but I love making them, and I don't want to charge extra for them, so... Can you? Oh, it just doesn't feel right. No, they gotta be the same price. That's that's just all there is to it. Mainly because it would feel unfair to the other dragons. Like, oh, these are special dragons that are worth more. No, they're just dragons. They're dragons in the family. They have to be treated the same, you know. So yeah, I'll lose some money to make my dragons. That's fine. Okay, this is going to be a whole lot of trial and error. I'm kind of debating whether I should take photos of all of my kind of connection pieces for all of my dragons, because I have a special section where I uh, photograph, you know, okay, here's an unusual connection for, say, the two-tailed dragon or the two-headed dragon and all that type of stuff. But all of the two-headed dragons so far that I've made, this is going to be the third, are being made entirely differently. <laughs> So I'm not entirely sure if I want to like have photographs of all of the two-headed dragons because, you know, it's all just variations on the same thing. They get symmetrical one side to the other. Make them have a good connection. Hmm. I'm trying to find out how best I like this. Scales always sitting too close to the center. attach the center of the scale first instead of the outside edge of the scale, and I think that'll do me a lot better. So I've been trying to get the outside of the scale so I can make sure the spacing is right, but that's really not working for me right now. <laughs> so let's try the inside here. That's just sort of breaking the song there, it's just like sudden realization, doing it different. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
from the underside need to connect to this I think since I kind of undid a little bit of the interwoven four and one on the uh, tip of the dragon here I need to kind of redo the interwoven part because now that I got the scales where I want them, I got these uh, shoulder slash neck scales where I want them. Now we got to get them woven in properly. Yep, that ring was definitely supposed to go through this one. We did it good. <laughs> plus the two that it was supposed to go through. Then just remove the old one. Which I think is going to be a good thing. approximately what I did here. I want to see how I connected the two scales from the underside. Because once I've got that nailed down, then I can attach the heads, and then the dragon can get its eyes, and then the dragons can get their names. <laughs> so a little bit of delay while I figure this part out before it gets its heads. Okay, there's no real rhyme or reason for what I'm doing now. I'm just kind of fitting rings in and hoping that they will work well to uh, hold the heads together. Let's see, this is interwoven 4 in 1, which is a European 4 in 1 weave. I should actually be able to kind of extend the weave by just uh, extending the European 4 in 1, which is exactly what I'm doing. I was starting to make a Persian sheet instead, but wasn't liking how dense that was starting to look there. So we'll instead European 4 and 1 it up here. 
Okay, one of these two rings is probably unnecessary, but we'll leave you there just for two seconds. Because if I go like this, then this will probably connect this scale into the body. In a sense. Yeah, yeah, that did a decent job. Okay, so this scale or ring is unnecessary because that kind of shows uh, past the scale here, like you would have seen this ring kind of hanging out underneath, and that's not good. <laughs> no, wait, 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 wait. That ring stays. What we want to do is come over here, pop in a ring over here, Yerking it up. Oh! Rebend the wire so that it's not twisted. Okay. Here we get another ring over here that connects the far side of the scale to the ring. And just kind of makes it a more secure connection all around. It gets connected in two places as opposed to one, so to speak. Okay, so that's decent. Now, I want to get that connected ever so slightly firmer if I can. So, if I were to go through this, European that section, but Persian this section, would that pull that downwards? Yes, it would, irritatingly. Okay, something like this. You know, I get the feeling that this is something that the uh, arms themselves will probably do good with. Although I'm not too minding this uh, ring right here that I just put in. I won't bother showing you up close because A, I don't have a good enough camera. B, it would kind of throw off my chain mailing. And C, it's a black rings which are really hard to see, so I'd literally need like a webcam with, you know, significantly better look. Again, sorry about the lighting. We're working on it. We're working on it. But what we're working on first is dragons, because to me that's more important than getting the lighting done. Because I've got to make art. <laughs> Presentation, that'll come later. That is coming later. Oh goodness, I have an amazing production coming up down the road. Is production the right word? It's going to be a still four hour take a shot in a corner of a room type of thing, so i got to buy lighting for that. And that's just going to be Phenomenal, like, what do you say type of thing. Oh, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Okay, now duplicate this ring. Okay, do we go through that ring? Is this right? <clears throat> Checking to make sure it's perfectly symmetrical between the two sides, and we are. Beautiful. I like that. I may swap those out for slightly smaller rings that I clip off, but for right at this moment, those work fantabulously. Here, I'll try and give you a quick look, see if it works. We'll see if it works. Ooh. Yeah, you can see what I did right in there, hopefully. Focus. So yeah, it's not quite a European 4-in-1 connection, this one ring right over here. But, you know, it does the job. It works pretty nicely to kind of connect the scales into the body and kind of angle it in. So I'm liking the look of that one, the feel there. Thank you, my baby. Okay, so... Now we need to get two more rings off of here, or will we be able to connect the heads more or less directly to that? So let's try taking this. Oh goodness! One of my work holder rings broke in half. Which I guess stands to reason when you're constantly bending it open and closed and open and closed like hundreds of times. <laughs> Uh, 
Ready? Do, do. Okay, this is the top of the uh, mouth. Okay, the top of the dragon head as opposed to you know, the underside. This one again can use just the slightest tweak. Now, okay, now, this is this, this is slanting upwards. Okay, this scale goes sit exactly where you're supposed to sit. So essentially the scale slants upwards, which is what we want. So essentially the scale would take the place of this ring. <clears throat> oh goodness, I apologize for the scratchy voice. I don't know what's up with that today. Hope I'm not coming down with something. Okay, so those two rings go over. Do I want the head to be slightly longer or slightly shorter? Do I want to add two rings or subtract two rings? Let's have a quick little comparison to C and C here. They're supposed to be twins, goodness. Now it looks like we're removing a ring more than anything. All right, all right, all right. So these two rings go connect to the scale. Then we can pull off this uh, additional ring here, which I'm going to leave for just a moment, because it'll just kind of help my mind to keep track of what I'm doing. Because that ring equals this scale. Okay, steady. Ooh, they're starting to get their heads. They're starting to get their heads. Okay, is that even right? Yes, it is. Now, this ring has to be opened and go through the scale. This is a little bit tricky. Come on. Come on. Oh, no slipping. Come on. Coax it in. Come on. It's being severed by like half a millimeter. Come on. For heaven's sake, I'm going to have to open up this ring slightly more. Nope, nope, okay, we got it. Okay, now I can pull off this additional ring in the middle that I was talking about. And you'll go over here, because you're assuming we're going to be needed. Oh, we got one head partially attached. Other head. You are going to be attached in a near identical fashion. Uh, I get the feeling I'm just going to buy a big bag of uh, white aluminum, whatever size this is. Looks like 10 gauge. Uh, what's about 3 eighths? You look like about this size. Oh, you are just about identical to this. Maybe one size larger than 3 eighths. 3 eighths are one size larger. 10 gauge, soft aluminum. Yeah. Okay, head number two. That would be my phone making notifications down. That's something important. No. Nope. <laughs> Thank you, my lover, so I'll 
look into that in a few seconds. I don't know, that tends to be like, you know, a longer-ish email. It's like, okay, I don't really want to break away from chain mailing for like 10 minutes here. My email for like earlier, so that's all fine and good. Oh goodness! Okay, dragon head, oh dragon head. So with that rings open dragon head. Gotta touch up the dragon head, so that's what we're doing with dragon head. Seriously, I must not have noticed it, uh, I think it was the day before yesterday, yeah, when I had uh, chain mailed last. Had a day off in between for various reasons there. Yeah, for whatever reason, uh, this, these heads are being just a particularly tight weave. Whatever in can you lose here? There we go. These two kind of snow rings were being a little bit difficult. So I could have maneuvered them a little bit. Are we still good? I think we're still good. Yeah, just fighting with the teeth. Uh, Last episode there, just, oh goodness, it was like an hour and a half, two hours ago I was working with just a bit of teeth alone. Probably closer to 45 minutes to an hour, but still, 45 minutes for six individual rings is quite the wow factor, something. Just touching up a handful of the rings. Some of them are open just the slightest hair, like the seam. So I'm kind of squeezing them shut. Stop squeezing that way, you're going to ruin the weave somehow. Oh, 
like I think it already did. Oh, let's try these flies. I'm just trying to rotate the sweater hanger around. <laughs> Working with millimeters. Good angle, good angle. There we go. Goodness, heavens to mercy, that one just fought and fought. Wow. Okay. Okay, all of that silly almost falling dust could be slightly, slightly, slightly better. Okay, now, you are supposed to attach this scale here. Uh, crank my neck a little bit, because I'm all hunched over and stuff. I saw kind of a thing online, like a little back strappy thing that'll straighten up your back and, you know, crack your posture and stuff. I'm kind of wondering if that'd be wise to get for a during chain mail. It's like 35 bucks, which is a little bit up there. But, you know, is that 35 bucks worth a try? Divine Feminine is saying, yeah. I'm kind of leaning in that direction. 35 bucks, though. For personal health? For 35 bucks. Dilemmas, yo. Know, Okay, I'll probably end up getting it. I took a screenshot. It's all you know, Google it or whatever. No idea what was actually called. They're getting closer! Their two heads are partially attached. 
Okay, let's get the necks now. If we can get the underside of the neck, then the uh, sides of the neck really fall into place. Okay, so we have this kind of loose ring down here to work with. Let's see, what could you attach to? Or will I have to add more rings to attach you to something? Might have to add another ring. Seeing these two kind of European it up together pretty well. So now, if I loop that around. Just making sure it's recording. <laughs> I got all this far in, but I forgot to get it recorded so I kind of have bad luck like that. I'll forget one single simple silly thing, and it'll end up having like catastrophic consequences. It's like every decision in my life is important. <laughs> Not to be lazy about decision making, eh? Adulting. Someone sent me a private message, it can wait. Hmm, not bad, not great. Let's see what else I can do with this ring. I'm oh, connecting it through here and through here. Because it's kind of leaning to one side as it is right now. So if we... I'm fairly certain that's too tight of a connection. Uh, this ring isn't open enough to actually go through. Okay, let's try this. Let's try this. You go through here and here. Oh. Hmm. It's not like that. Through that and this. Maybe, maybe. I don't want to be making it too tight. Although that's decent. That's decent. Come on. Come to me. Ooh. That's not bad. See how I got the uh, underside of the neck there? Just the I got the extra rings on this side. And this side you can see is a little bit empty inside of there. So now let's go match the two. We've got two more quarter inch rings, which, which works out fairly well for just straight up connecting the neck here. Actually, I only need one of them. Then we'll need another two a little bit. Okay, so duplicate. I'm connecting through this ring. Come on. And is it this ring? These two? Do the two sides match. I think so, so I'll close this on tentatively. Then go in for closer examination. Nope, something's not right, it's not leaning the same. Okay, drop it. Okay, so we've got this neck ring. Come here. And we are going through this one. Am I going this way through this ring? Or am I going the other way through that ring? That's where my problem was the other way. So now we go through this one. And I think still through this one. With the same combo I had before. With that very first ring being flipped. 
Come on. There we go. With the same level of tightness to the other side head. Going there, there, there. We're supposed to be connected to a board. It's connected to that one too for some reason. Whether accidentally or otherwise. Let's try to put it through there. Let's let's keep with that. Okay, and then close. Okay, double check. Two there. There, there. All right. We have a symmetrical bottom of my head. Let me show you. Oh. Focus. I want to focus right here. Don't focus on that. There we go. Yeah, nice and symmetrical, eh? If I'm holding it straight. Yeah, good stops. Whoop! Whoop! Ah! <laughs> There's still stuff on the ground around me. Okay, okay, now we're getting somewhere. Now we're cooking with fire power. What? One of my babies suggested that phrase. Now we're cooking with fire power? What? That was a cool. <laughs> cooking with fire, but you needed another syllable. <laughs> okay, we just need a few open ones here. Okay, yeah, let's do six rings. Then we have a handful of three sixteenths inch rings that we'll be working with as well. Although we'll any extras of those are going to go towards the legs, which what time are we sitting at? 10.30? I'm figuring to chain mill until about noonish. Maybe a little afternoon. We have a decent chance of finishing this dragon today. We have a decent chance of their birthday being today. Decent! <laughs> okay, would a quarter inch ring fit on the inside of the necks? Because now it's just like, hey, the necks are kind of loose. What can we put into here to uh, tighten it all up? Come on. I'm going to get it when the ring opening is again. Half a millimeter off. Okay, is that too loose or is that good? Because we can 316 set up to. Or even 732 would have to buy clip off a bit. Let's let's just have a quick look see. Seems like a fair amount of play. Let's try to take a 316 on the other side, and then we'll just swap out whichever one I dislike more. Hey, the benefit of a two-headed dragon. I can test two things at once. And immediately compare which I prefer. Okay, so let's try going for the scale first this time. This poor scale which has like six other rings through it. So if you picture it, it's essentially a 316 cent ring with three or sorry, six 18 gauge rings going through it. So it's really kind of tight inside of there. Okay. Now this 316 here is really hard to close, so we're just going to pinch close it like, you know, mostly close, just so that no rings can slide through the seam. Come on. Ah, uh, that does tighten it up so that they're uh, a little bit more facing each other. Do I want your heads to sway out more or not? What looks better? Swaying out more is kind of nice. Let's see if I can do something about tightening up that section right there. I don't know if it makes sense to photograph the uh, centers of all of the dragon or the interesting connection points of all the dragons. Hey, I bet if I went through that, that would help. Okay, we're going to try a thing. This here, right here. 
Fifty sooner dragon will be getting a name is clear. Okay. Okay, so now let's close this. Okay, is that still giving you a bit of play? As much play? A little bit less play. Keeps that from uh, falling out, so to speak. I'm not sure if I like that, but it does kind of tighten up the deck, which is what I was looking for. So we'll try putting a second one on in the exact same manner, technically the exact opposite manner, because we're on the opposite side. Which means you're working with the right side of this dragon's head, whereas you were working with the left side of the other dragon's head. Oh, there you are, exactly like that. There we really adjust this. So I kind of want these dragon has to have a fair amount of splay out from each other. There's very little splay with that uh, configuration. I want them to splay. So we'll unhook it from that ring, reconnect it back to these two rings. So I see if I even want to bother doing something in between that little in-between section there. So there's one area where the rings would look a little bit better if they're overlapping. Maybe even look better without overlapping. Just because then there's a bit of a thinner neck section instead of, you know, the width of the head directly sliding into the width of the body, which sort of makes sense, because it's, you know, a snake dragon style thing. So it makes sense for the neck to be the same width as the body. But I like a thinner neck, just, just a little bit. Might have some definition there. Okay, so we have a fair amount of splay out between the heads, which is awesome. Now, can I do anything with this section here which minorly irritated me? <laughs> Honestly, I doubt it. Can I do anything with the outside of the heads? Because I always think that those two rings there always just seem so loose. I don't like it. Okay, so we're going to try and put this 316s inch ring here. And that I think will do a good job of kind of blending the head into the, uh, the double head into the body. Unbelievably difficult to close though. Come on. Oh, no, 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 too much. Jane Mail, hey? Okay. You stubborn ring. It's kicking my pliers all over the place. I do kind of like that, though. I want to keep that. Fits with the looseness of the other side of the head, so I like that. Let me take a photo of the bottom of uh, this dragon uh, head, because this is a little bit more loosey goosey. I like this. It's not quite as uh, Okay, well, your two heads are fairly loose as well, but not quite as loose. <laughs> and I do like them to be a little bit more independent from each other. Okay, which one did I just do right there? So, in that case, we're going here. Through here and through here. Basically, just make this side of the neck. And there go both final rings. This is a loose ring too. This isn't even in a tight spot. I just have like two millimeters to work with. Okay, we're gonna try rotating this ring. Which if we were in a tight spot wouldn't be possible is what I meant by that. 
And he said, the other side is loosey-goosey. It's loosey-goosey, but I still only have like a millimeter on the other side of the ring to work with the way it was. <laughs> There we go. Okay. Okay. Still not 100% fond of that neck. Let's see if there's anything I can do about that. Like it kind of has this ridge right here, which I don't like that. It looks like an Adam's apple. The snakes don't have Adam's apples. Generally speaking, neither do dragons, or at least neither do live dragons. So if I add one more ring, will that just kind of ring with that out, so to speak? That's what I was looking for. More or less creating a hoop. This string can use the slight adjust. There we go. Almost like it needs to slam to this way. Maybe that. Hmm. It's pretty deep down. Deep dish. Our dragons aren't pizzas. <laughs> kind of else is a kind of deep dish pizza. Which I'm fairly certain is just another way of saying lots of toppings. I don't know if there's like an actual the entomology of a piece of what it means to have to be considered a deep dish. Food, not really my forte. Not really my thing. You know, I'll eat it. And I did make uh, stew yesterday, which is uh, basically just vegetables, because the meat's expensive. That's yes. oh heavens to mercy. I have nailed it. Oh, 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 I gotta show ya. Oh, that's that's decent. Okay. Not 100 percent certain I like that 100 percent but it's a good start to work with. So we just added this tiny 316 inch ring right here. No, the other side doesn't exist there. And, and it, it kind of makes this ring, and the one above it kind of like, you know, make a line towards the center of the head. And it just makes a really nice line there. So I'm kind of liking that. Let's see if I can stick with that. Now the edge of it is kind of sticking up a little. Same reason when you have lots of diagonal style rings kind of all over the place. And here I am basically trying to keep flat. Let's take a flat, 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 flat. <laughs> Which we may end up doing with kind of a large central neck ring. But let's get rid of this big old bump here. That's decent. That's decent. And maybe you can just leave it like that. I wish I had a little bit more bulk right here so that neck kind of blends into the two heads a little bit better. So let's just kind of play with the ring for a second here and see if I can kind of create that feel to it. <clears throat> okay, that ring is pretty much maxed out. For how many sub rings can go inside of it? It's almost like we need a ring to go from here. And basically, you look at it for that other one way back there. So we go through these two. Let me consider getting rid of that cute little initial ring that I just did a minute ago. Let's start ditching that for a second. At least on one side, we'll put in a bigger ring instead. I don't, I don't hundred percent like the way the neck looks right now. It's too sharp of an angle from the heads into the body, and I want that blended better. Okay, so we're gonna go through these two rings, perhaps, because that kind of diagonals this ring down a bit. And if we were to go through that one, 
Now we unfortunately angle it up that way, which I don't want. What about we down here? Just connecting it straight up to that one. That makes for a very vertical ring, which I'm not all the fun to sell. We can angle it through this one, it'll make for a very tight connection. Not necessarily bad, but not necessarily good. Let's try and take you on for a second. What does that do for the looks? Nothing that I like. <laughs> Which is good, so I kind of restricted its movement a bit. I didn't like that. Okay. Can I go through that or will that cause issues? In all likelihood, it cause issues. Yes. Okay, we can connect through these two rings. That one we kind of pull this way. And then we do a ring over there. Let's try this for a hot second. Yeah, if we kind of European this out, that actually gives it a decent look. That's still a little bit loose, which is unfortunate. Let me try to connect you into that. Yeah, none of this uh, at this point is really about strength or integrity or anything like that. This is pretty much just entirely messing real for looks. I don't think this screen right now for the one that I just did really does anything whatsoever. Let's take that out. Let's see, we have this big one that I just put in. What would happen if I connected that to this neck right here? Because if that worked, that wouldn't be too shabby. Whether I can do that on both sides remains to be seen. Hmm. Hmm. I will not be able to do that on both sides. Not well. Nope. That's a shame. That would have worked out really nice if it worked out really nice. <laughs> Okay, so let's ditch that ring over there. Ditch that one there. We have that one that's that's the stubborn one that I'm fighting with right at this very second. How about that funny ring that I did on the other side? What if I just leave it as that and bulk that side up there differently? Let's try that. Let's try that. This initial method here is not really any weller. Well, the initial method was the 316th century, which should do me well. Still will return to that. <laughs> if you can. Is that right? That's right. And it's this outside edge here that I want to work on slightly. So, let's try an intervene or two in there, specifically. See what it does. So, if you connect it to this ring, come on, don't bite. Into this ring. Come on. Oh. Hmm. I don't know if that's going to fit. It looks like it should. It just might not be open enough. Or we're squeezed closed when I was trying to like push you against something. But it happens more often than you think. Okay, that's decent. That's, does that pull your head down at all? 
Doesn't look like it. The other thing we have to take into account is when we're looking for the shape that the rings that we put in don't like affect its head motion. It's going to be to kind of give them a yes and no type of thing. But generally speaking, with the two heads, dragons, they uh, tend to yes and no at the same time. And this one's not too bad. Okay, so then we go on to the quarter inch ring on the other side that more or less mirrors that one. Well, not more or less, directly mirrors that one. <laughs> oh, only one of you through that ring and through that ring. Oops, come on. Let's see if I can do this slightly differently. Give me a little bit more ring to work with the uh, pretty close cool everything after. <laughs> the moment of putting a chain mailer, that final ring that's really, really difficult to put in. And of course, more or less all chain mail projects come with. Dragons, they kind of come in the middle. The lights themselves are pretty easy. Those are the last things to be made. Okay, that's decent. That's a decent kind of splay or sway 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 down. There we go, fix that. You know, where was I? I was adding this ring in. Or did I just add that ring in? I just added that ring in. So now I'm thinking of 316s right at the bottom here where the net connects to the body kind of deeper in. Would it be stellar? You can try going for both of those there because it ever so slightly mildly annoyed me if they were unconnected. But we're also unable to be connected. So I can connect them with just uh, three sixteenths. That minor inkling in my head will disappear. <laughs> yeah, the secret is, do you look good? Do you look good? I don't want to. <laughs> oh, you too, CMC.
Okay, go to the quarter of your wings. And this may well be the very last place for the neck. Three sixteenths in each ring. Certainly looking that way. See the big through this way? Yes, I did. I'm going to kind of pull that over to here. And then you go through these two rings. Then we close the gap, which we're going to do slightly differently on this side, which may not be possible. Oh, wait. Okay, we're good. There we go. There we go. There we go, just getting ever so slight minor tweaks on some of the rings. You know, black and steel, it has that kind of like a little curve to it, that edge. I'm just trying to smooth those out. Woo! Okay, so we have the two heads connected to the body. Yes! Now, let's give our dragon some eyes, yo! Now we're actually going to need four of them. My contemplation. Do I want to give this dragon green eyes? It's got a green body. You have green quarter inch rings, but I can try to use them to fit there. Blow my nose for a moment, I apologize. Not human bodies, eh? But I think silver eyes would look better. As tempting as this is, it's too green. It's too green and I don't like it. Okay, okay. Now, normally would be, now would be the time where either during live stream or I would be asking my deities uh, what name they wish to uh, put in for the dragon. They can do that on a live stream regardless, but this dragon has actually already had their names picked out. So I'm going to keep it a secret until we put the eyes in. Ooh. <laughs> I'm still not sure we have a dragon now. Contemplation. The dragons of motivation and contemplation. Contemplation and happiness. Uh, the names are kind of based off of a thing. So the uh, aspect of the dragon may come a little bit later. Oh, I'm not sure I like that body position. It kind of droops in a little bit. We're just going to Google search these characters here that this is based on us. Let's just do some research here.
Okay. I'm going to go out the field here. He looked pretty awake, so I don't know if I want the sleepy eyes. See how the guess the uh, names of the dragons are going to be the same. It's going to be Daryl and Daryl. Oh, goodness. Which will be a lot more official the second I get the eyes in. Woo! But first, you need your eyes in. <laughs> Funny that. Okay, I don't think that's going to go through there. You may end up having to have tired looking eyes just because of the way that this is being. What if I go like this? It's creating a really tight connection. Let's see. If I were to put you like this, that's decent. That's decent. Okay, I think I found my eye position. Very, very difficult to close. But the eyes are kind of gonna, kind of gonna be flat to the head. And that's, that's, so that's pretty good. It looks nice and awake, and uh, it's got the feel I want. We got something. Oh, Nelly, do we got something. I wonder who the first Nelly was that that was phrase came from. Who is Nelly? Wasn't that a horse? Whoa, Nelly. I think so. Not something I'm going to bother looking up. Something I'm vaguely curious about. But not enough to actually do research. <laughs> oh yeah, that clip there. That's from the show New Heart. Something I've never actually seen, but uh, that the friend that this is for really liked. That's how they came up with the names. Like, they picked out the names of their dragons before receiving the dragon, which is kind of awesome, because she's looking forward to it. Which is why I've been pushing myself a little bit to try and finish it. Like, normally I wouldn't do chainmail before work. Okay, it's extremely rare that I work evenings, so I can't say that. But, yeah, normally for me, work is work, and that comes first, and nothing matters until that's done. <laughs> and then after work comes literally everything else. So with evenings, it's kind of breaking me out of that cycle just a little bit, because I'm doing, uh, you know, art before work. Which is awesome, because I do kind of put it on a higher pedestal than work. If I could make my life as an artist, that would be tops. Well, I'd still probably do healthcare aid work part time, but it certainly wouldn't be like, you know, my most important -y type of thing. Of which it's still kind of not, but you know, I'd gotta pay the bills and buy food. If I did that, ooh, there's the life I'm looking for. If I'm going to find, this is going to be awesome. Okay. Woo! One of the Daryls has his eyes. All right. One more. One more. And then four legs. What are we sitting at for time? Eleven almost on the nose. Okay, we can finish this dragon. We can finish this dragon today. Adoption scroll? Maybe. You haven't really told me what you're about yet. But we can finish this dragon. Probably the adoption scroll. Okay. 
Well, plus that I now know the proper sp spelling of Daryl. Because, you know, there's a few different ways that one can go. Like, more or less all names. Katie Lynn loves to be misspelled. Like, it's an unusual name, so, you know, fair on that, but forgetting the E at the end or putting a space in the middle, can't really blame them for either of those, I suppose. One of those things that if you don't know, you should ask type of thing. Don't just assume you know the spelling. I guess if you think there's only one way that it's spelled, like, say, James or... Joe, you know, there really is only one way to spell them. Other ones, the second you start adding more syllables, then it's like, okay, now, now things can start changing it up. I've got three syllables, which is kind of cool. Three is a good number, lucky in a lot of places. I wonder if I put the overhead lighting on, if that would help. We're getting a lot of glare kind of coming right off of the chain mail right now. Let's try a something. Let's try a something. Sorry, natural lighting, they're just too natural. Not not helping me out. Oh, yeah. Could be better. Let me try one more thing. One more thing. That maybe? Does that help that a lot of them make me darker overall or? No, I think that helped. That kind of stopped the extreme brightness in one spot and dimness in the rest. Just want to rotate this one around right so the seam isn't like right at the top. I do try and do that every so often. If there's like a particularly visible spot, I try and rotate the ring associated with it so that the seam is hidden. That just makes it look nicer. Okay, whoop. See, I don't think we're doing it that way. Okay, this last eye we're going to have to do some extra fiddling with. Come on. No, no fighting. It's fighting. <laughs> uh, it's things like this that slightly open up a ring is on chain mail. Fighting with just the most exact of fittings. Generally with chain mail isn't a good thing. It's kind of making me consider rethinking this eye. We got three of them in though, so the other like the other head worked out perfectly well with this. So I'm a bit hesitant to abandon it at this point. Just this last one. Why are you fighting so insanely hard? What was so difficult about going through that opening? And then through here. And then up through here. I didn't like the order that I was going in or something. Oh! Kind of mangled the ring a little bit in that kind of testing there. So now let's bend it back, if that's possible. Otherwise I just get another ring. But I think we can do this. Whoa. Steady.
Okay, come on you. Woo! Daryl and Daryl have their eyes. Yeah, I know it's a wonderful, exciting time for a dragon. Oh, you do. Give me your twins. Oh, goodness. Goodness, goodness. I'm just going to try a uh, theoretical here quick. Okay, just try to adjust the teeth for a second and see if it did anything. Nothing good. Okay, now you need legs, that means we need 108 3 16 inch rings. Then I'm going to do everything in my power to take a uh, promo shot of this dragon before work and get an adoption scroll made and do all of the photos for that. So I can hopefully present her with the dragon today, because that would be fantastic. Oh, I can't wait to see the expression on her face. Okay. Now we open up a pile of rings. How many do we have here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, Eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Now I see a little bit different from my dragon to her dragon. That's kind of unfortunate, but that's the way the head worked. You can only do what you can do. And to connect the eyes in the same way on uh, Charlemagne and Cleopatra as Daryl and Daryl would be literally impossible. Like the rings just, for whatever minor differences there are, didn't work out the same. Every dragon's different. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty-three, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 23, I think, 24, 25, 26, 27, 30, I think we need 56 of these. I think. Or was it 60 and 58? What's 108? 58 and 50? 58 and 50 maybe. I know I'm not really counting all that hard. I'm just opening up rings right now.
That's kind of a new addition there, that. I like that. Okay, let's try closing some now. Get a whole pile of closed rings. And we'll see how far we get with this pile. Two legs tops. Nearing the completion of a dragon. Always exciting. Oop, accidentally opened that one. Huh. <sighs> Goodness, what are we sitting at for recording time? An hour and a half. Yeah, that's not bad. And we're working on a dragon. A really long dragon here. That's we already put about six hours into it. So seven, seven and a half. Yeah, this will be about a nine hour dragon. You know, I generally consider the uh, photograph and adoption scroll to be about an hour long. It's probably a little bit longer than that, to be honest. And also, uh, putting a name tag on the dragon and all that. Then there's the act of actually uh, uploading all of the photos to, like, Zebeth and Facebook and all of those. And making a comment on there and stuff. So really, I should add about another hour to each dragon just for sheer straight-out social media. So that would make uh, most dragons, let's see, three hours, four, four, five, six. So let's say about uh, six hours for a regular dragon. Uh, we uh, are basically going under the theory of tech on three hours for adoption scroll, name tag, and social media. Stands to reason about. Like, I've done 50 some odd of these. So I kind of got the gist down of uh, how much work goes into all of that part. Slightly longer because of the slow internet connection. More or less just having to wait for a screen to open. <laughs> Uploading this video to YouTube that you're watching right now on YouTube. <laughs> Unless I found it space somewhere else, at which point, welcome. <laughs> That seems to be my thing somewhat. Either short, tiny little, uh, like, uh, 30 second to one minute videos, my song of days, or otherwise big, giant, long, like, drawn out things, like my scythe project, where it was uh, recorded entirely in first person, and you got to watch the whittling of a scythe at Ursula behind me there, in Bellatrix. I'm pretty sure I did her knitting. But no, I don't think I recorded the knitting of Bellatrix there. Or if I did, that was lost to my uh, previous YouTube channel. Sad. New heart. Got that uh, like 10 second clip that I watched back there that almost looked kind of amusing. I'm a little bit intrigued to look up an episode or two. Probably not today because I got to go to work for three. And it's currently 11.30, and I want to get all of my dragoning stuff with this dragon, with these dragons. <laughs> the, oh no, don't roll away, ring. I don't have to close more. Okay, well, looking for it any longer will waste time. 
<laughs> the balance. Looking for a ring versus just getting another one. Okay. Okay. Box chain, apple box chain. 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 Making it rain. Box chain of a box chain, a weave that I know well. I should cut that out and make that my song a day. Want to do another song of a or song a day recorded during the recording? That's kind of amusing, ain't it? Yeah, let's do that. Just because I might forget it, like say midnight or something like that. You know, when I get home from work. Honestly, I expect to be busy right up until the second I go to work. And hopefully won't be late, because I have never been late yet, and I'd prefer to keep it that way. <laughs> hey y'all, time for another song of the day! Woo! Don't forget to like and subscribe, and also share. Box chain, oh box chain. Box chain, a uh, box chain, box chain, a uh, box chain. I'm making it right now. Working on our dragon, Daryl and Daryl here. Box chain, fall for their legs. Box chain all the way. <laughs> so yep, uh, we're doing another dragon recording. So woo, inception again. And uh, we are near done our uh, near clone of uh, Charlemagne and Cleopatra. We've got Daryl and Daryl here and Charlemagne and Cleopatra. You can see their eyes are slightly different. That's because the uh, neck connection is slightly different, which basically made for a looser head here allowing eyes like that, and a tighter head here forcing for eyes like that. So every dragon is different. <laughs> And yeah, that's awesome. I got the tail done, I got the neck done, I got the heads done, and I'm just working on the legs right now. We need four of here, CNC. Four of these. That part, the dangly part. Not the tail, the arm. <laughs> you get the idea. We need four of those. I've got about a third of one done, and uh, let's continue at it. Have a nice day, all. Here. Getting better at my meow, I think. Now let's go pop that onto YouTube. We'll rename it later. That one's slightly more than a minute, which is a bit of a nuisance for Instagram. I think I'm on 325 now. Okay, I'll edit that later. Let's just uh, pop that online right now so that you don't have to watch me, you know, typing away on a keyboard all boring like. Oh, that's another thing with the song a day. Having to go through and edit to playlists and everything, like, the mobile app for YouTube leaves a lot to be desired. Just, just some small things, but they require a whole lot of, like, upkeep later on on the computer. Or like just on your cell phone going through different tabs and windows just to kind of set it to functional. Like why do you not allow me to edit a playlist or like a specific playlist while I'm uploading? Why do you not allow or like have the tag section inside of there when I'm uploading on mobile? So that I have to go into there either like edit it after the fact of it being uploaded which you know my mind is already like four subjects ahead by the time that's done uploading. Just uh, the mobile app leaves a lot to be desired. So I need to go back and add, say, like the last 10 songs or so to the uh, Song A Day playlist. And that's really about it. I'm working with the hashtags that I'm working with just because doing more social media upkeep on, uh, like, the uh, Song A Days 
is unfortunately just way too time consuming for me. Like if I had a better computer, that right there would make a world of difference. I have a slow ass fucking computer. Unbelievably slow internet where I am here. I am hoping to upgrade my computer at some point in the vaguely near future, probably a few months from now. And uh, yeah, definitely one with a better camera. You're watching through a uh, external webcam now, which is why it's so much better quality than the first half of the um, uh, what you might call it, Black Dragon series here. Whatever I was calling it, double-headed dragon, two-headed dragon. Okay, now we're getting to the Byzantine section. I'm kind of tempted to look at the Byzantine era of history and just see what its like, you know, focal points were and what its recognizable features were. And just see if I can find any correlation between the Byzantine weave and like the Byzantine era. Because I imagine there has to be. Like maybe it's just the kind of uh, style or the feel of the style. It's kind of a bit chunkyish, but it has like, you know, fancy segments connected with little gaps. So maybe it has to do with that. Box chain, no oh, box chain. We are making you box chain, no oh, box chain. A song for me and you. Box chain, no oh, box chain. We're putting it to peace. Box chain, no oh, box chain. The last sentence made no sense. <laughs> Uh, trying to rhyme on the fly. Gotta practice, yo! And you know, I've only really been singing... Can I count this as a career? Singing as a career choice for like two years now? Three years maybe? Like actually using words in my songs, that's got to be only about one year now. But uh, throat singing, that's probably been two to three years now. I want to say three. Yeah, three years. Maybe four? I should actually like document that at some point or another. Just because uh, the year of college and the year of loss, that really, really threw off my timeline for when things happened. So I essentially wrote those two years off. Those two years of my life, for all intents and purposes, don't exist. And so, you know, it throws off my timing of things. Did this happen three or four years ago? I don't know. That was kind of in and around that whole loss section there. So I don't know. <laughs> It must be longer than that that I was throat singing, technically, because I was still married to my ex at the time, which has got to be about four to five years ago. I should look that up too. <laughs> Surprised I haven't memorized it. I have to pull out my silly like marriage and divorce paperwork for like just about any official form that I need to fill out, like insurance stuff or whatever. Are you or were you per, uh, previously married? <sighs> From what date to what date? Well, I'll go grab the paperwork. I know what the official days are and everything like. This was years ago. Why do you need to know this? I'm single. Stop like digging up my past. She's irrelevant. <laughs> Not even in this city. <laughs> I don't understand. Like, so, uh, not even going to speculate. All I can think of is negative reasons why they'd want that information. <laughs> if the government asks for something, it's not for your benefit. <laughs> I hope the economy crashes sometime. Stock market just completely plummets. The prices of everything go down to, you know, a remotely logical number, which would be like, you know, half or a quarter or a fifth of what they are right now. Although, in all honesty, if they drop that much, they're going straight to zero. Or straight up, the uh, stock market uh, just completely fails. Like, the mathematics of it and the sheer corruption of it just, you know, it doesn't work out anymore. Because it's just computers trading numbers with other computers right now. Like, 
There's very little human interaction involved in the stock market. It's basically just a permanent number increasing machine, which is sad and pathetic. People used to invest in things because they believed in a company. Now it's because their numbers can go up ever so slightly faster than other numbers. And there's just trillions of transactions processed every single sec every single second for the purposes of, okay, we're going to buy a whole ton of these things now. Now the price has gone up by like, you know, 0 0.00000001 cents per share. So now we're going to sell a million shares, and now the price has gone down by 0 0.00000001 like cents. Okay, so now the price is going down, so let's buy another whole ton of them. And you know, that type of BS. Okay, I remember what that's called. There's a specific term for that one. We need a whole pile more rings here. So yeah, I'm hoping that whole corrupt ass system uh, collapses at some point or another. That would be wonderful. And hopefully in some manner or another uh, that would either cause or force the government to reset our dollar. Because wages have... I'm going to pray a lot about this shitty issue for a little while here. <laughs> because the, uh, you know, wages have been stagnant since the 1980s. So, like, uh, you know, essentially you worked for, like, say, one hour or two hours. Let's say, uh, I have one hour because I'm making, like, 18-something. And you got $20. And that would have been that way in the 80s, essentially. Like, you know, $5 off uh, from that or whatever. More or less approximate. However, that $20 would have bought you, like, four loaves of bread, like, three cartons of milk, like meat, cheese, and still have uh, a little bit left to put on to like, you know, a visa payment or something like that. Whereas nowadays that'll get you like one loaf of bread, one carton of milk, no meat, screw that, <laughs> a handful of vegetables, and a bag of potatoes, and that's it. And nothing to your visa. <laughs> like, the prices have tripled or quintupled. Quadrupled or quintupled? And in the meantime, our wages have not, so... You know, we're making less and spending more. And we're technically making more, but it costs us, costs us uh, five times that in order to actually buy anything. So we're making less in comparison to, like, physical objects. And I'm sure all of that heavily ties into the fact that we're uh, heavily overpopulated as a planet. There's seven billion of us. The population is exponentially increasing. And whenever I bring this up on social media, one of my friends... Like, clearly doesn't do research or, like, think. <laughs> Says something like, oh, but the population is actually, uh, or the rate of population growth has been going down in the past few years. Is it still going up? Yes. Well, then, it's going up. <laughs> like, it's a slow down. It's still exponentially growing. Like, 1 to the power of 1.25 versus 1 to the power of 1.24, it's still a higher power of exponential. <laughs> they don't seem to understand. Maybe they're trying to like just force away the obvious worry in the background of there are too many humans. Like, if we had a government that actually meant a damn, then what they would do is implement a one-child policy, because, you know, 7 billion people needs to be less people. Someone has uh, an extra child? I'm sorry, we're gonna have to get medieval. <laughs> There's too many humans. Like, fuck, turn them into food. Honestly, it's just straight up protein. Like, if we want to go all straight up cannibal and such here. Like, we eat other animals. Humans are animals. Personally, I'm pro-cannibalism in a post-apocalyptic world type of scenario. Or like, you know, alive, lost in a uh, plane crash in a mountain type of scenario. Yeah, yeah, you know, wait till they're done and stuff and, uh, yeah, okay, uh, respect them and, you know, give, or like, if they don't want their body to be eaten after death, you know, respect that. Okay, all right, well, well, that's cool, we'll just bury you and stuff. For me personally, if I die in, like, any kind of scenario that would allow it, eat my corpse. Like, this is valuable protein. There is meat here. This will keep you alive. Eat it. <laughs> kind of a bit of a, uh, the reasoning behind uh, why, uh, for, like, my organ donor card type of thing, like, donate everything to science and 
medical technology and all that stuff. But my ideal in my will thing will be, if they allow it, whatever's left after, like science and everything, strips my body, throw the rest into a bog and let the bears eat it. Like, feed the animals. Don't cremate it, don't like put it in the ground, don't put it in a box, no. Just chuck it in a forest, let the bears eat it. <laughs> I... I'm pretty practical. <laughs> I've eaten bear meat actually once. Really greasy. I'd eat it again to be honest, just for the sake of, hey, do you, is this bear the same tasting as the bear that I tasted ages ago? And if so, so then like, all right, cool. Probably wasn't prepared in the best way either because it was so greasy, although I get the feeling that, uh, you know, with hibernation and all that such, a bear is generally going to be a very greasy meat. Like, suppose I could look that up and I'm sure there's going to be instructions online on how to like, whatchamacallit, cook bear? And that'd be awesome, provided I have access to bear. I do live in a city with a lot of trappers. So maybe I'll kind of put the word around town that I'm looking for bear meat and, you know, just see what happens. Are bears, like, endangered here or something? Can't mention they'd be endangered in one specific... Okay, I guess that's possible. Something could uh, technically be endangered in one location, but not another. Maybe, maybe. I'm not entirely sure how that works. This one ring is a little bit scritched. Put you off to the side, because you're plenty good enough for more or less any other project. But this one's for a friend, so we're going to avoid that. Or if you were, like, say, more buried in the weave or something like that. This one's a little bit shiny. We'll kind of keep that one for a little bit further up in the leg. Despite the fact that the claws, in theory, would get shinier than anything else, because, you know, they're digging in the dirt and stuff and playing around and scrabbling across the ground. Of course, their feet are going to get shinier faster than the rest of them. To get black and steel that truly stayed black, and that would be amazing. But more or less, no matter what blackening process there is for steel that I've, uh, you know, seen, it always has some, like, loss due to uh, wear and tear. And dragons, they're play toys, there's wear and tear. But that said, it has a really nice look to it when it's uh, faded off slightly. Like here, I'll show you an up close between Charlemagne and Cleopatra's, say, here's a good example. Tail versus tail. So... Here you can see Charlemagne and Cleopatra's a little bit shinier, and then uh, Daryl and Daryl a little bit darker. You can even see kind of between the leg and the uh, tail. But this kind of shiny black has a really nice look to it. Like patina, is that the right word? It has a really nice patina. And oh, it's, it's shiny black. Like the other one is a matte black, and this is shiny. So, you know, pick and choose. Well, I guess you don't really get to pick and choose. It starts as matte and ends up shiny. Just like the mouth ring. The dragon shines up to you. Same with titanium, actually, too. That'll uh, shine up a little bit, too, because that's a little bit of a duller metal. Okay. We did two legs. And now we're working on a third. And now we're working on a third. And now we're working on a third. Do 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 Now we're working on a third. Now we're work where is my recording? Oh you're already going. Where is my song today? <laughs> We're already working on the third. Third, 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 the third. Mm -hmm.
You see, those are the ones that I've got to record for the song of the day. That's why when I record those, I usually look a little bit scraggly or something, because, you know, inspiration just, like, hits me in some manner or another there. So I, like, jump on it. I've actually gotten a few comments on Instagram, which is cool, because I have, like, you know, not many Instagram followers or anything. Just have, or I haven't had these accounts for too terribly long. And also, I'm completely new to the music industry. Like, I've never been in a music uh, studio. I was in a choir back in high school, like, 30 years ago. And that's the extent of my musical knowledge. <laughs> high school choir. Yup. <laughs> so it's kind of hard, like, breaking into an industry that you literally know absolutely nothing about. So I'm kind of trying, like, you know, I'm friending up people on uh, Instagram more than anything else. I'm living way off in Nepal. I tried talking to the radio station to see if I could uh, sing on the radio, but uh, they only have, whatchamacallit, uh, they only uh, do charted songs. So I'm going to wait a little bit and try emailing them again and ask them if they wouldn't mind just having a local artist on the air, like just uh, as an interview type of thing. I'm basically kind of trying to play it up as another angle. That's essentially what I said the first time. But then he's like, no, we only play charted music. You're having a local artist. This isn't about, like, promoting a song. Like, I don't even have a CD yet. That's another thing. All of my songs are about a minute longer, a minute 20 or 40 seconds or something like that. Like, short, fun little quips. Which is why at uh, some point or another, once I've cut up on uh, my dragons and just caught up with life in general, I'm going to uh, try emailing my discography to a pile of advertising companies and be all... Hey, I make throat singing songs, which is a unique talent in and of itself, and my songs all tend to be, or my songs are all original, and they're all just about uh, commercial length. So, is there anyone that you uh, could think of uh, me pitching myself to? I need an agent is what I need. I honest to goodness need an agent. I thought of that a few years ago, but that was during the uh, poorest parts of my life, so I just didn't have the willpower, willpower or money. I was too depressed to, like, think of going and, you know, I tried to go to a uh, talent agency at one point, but I don't think I even got into the door there. <laughs> like, it's a very, very difficult thing to get into, finding an agent and stuff. And then you have to pay the agent, which again, during the poorest part of my life, like, I tried to do everything that I could do aside from, like, throwing money at it, because... So I would, like, you know, sing in public, and I would, uh, sing at karaoke bars my own songs, and I would, uh, you know, kind of uh, basically go to radio stations and sing outside their doors and things like that, and, you know, just hope. Hope that the right person is listening, and it sparks their interest, and they come out and see what it is. That's that's basically what I was going for for years. Not really all that possible in the paw. Um, I'm sure I'll sing in public a little bit more, but I'm in a tiny little town in the middle of nowhere, like... And the radio station won't play me. <laughs> so uh, who knows what options I have whatsoever. Maybe I'll post it on like the Facebook communities of, hey, I have this talent. Is there anyone uh, that you would suggest I uh, get hooked up with? Because I'm not in a music town. I can't go to a studio and ask them. I can't go to a local band and ask them. There are not. At least none that I'm aware of. I'm sure there's going to be at least one local band somewhere somehow. I also just moved here and don't know anything or anyone. So, flying blind. But, you know, you keep on flying. And right now, since I don't have enough uh, original songs to make a full CD, I'm basically just kind of, uh, you know, having that on the back burner, just practicing my singing in general with my song of the day and just otherwise. And just, just living. Pushing my art instead of my singing right at this moment. Poverty, it, it does you, doesn't it? Just kind of makes you not care. Yeah, well, live and learn, eh? Not even live and learn, just live. <laughs> what did you learn? Poverty sucks. Fair? <laughs> Dropped a few rings into their own bin. A handful of them into the blue. They have really, really shiny blue rings, which worked really well for, uh, oh shoot, what were their names? 
Ingrid and Freya, my uh, other other two-headed dragon, that was adopted uh, by my friend Hiroshi and is now living over there. So this is actually going to be my third two-headed dragon, which is kind of awesome. I'm getting better at though. I'll give it that. And these two have the forked tail, which is kind of cool. I will at some point or another do a two-headed and full two-tailed dragon. Although at that point with the body, I'm going to want the uh, rings underneath to kind of like be silver on one side and black on the other. So it's like a Siamese twin black and white type of dragon type of thing going on there. That looked awesome. Still debating on whether to make that two-tailed. Definitely has to be two-headed. I'm not sure about two-tailed. Three-headed. The three-headed dragon could have that operation done to it. Because uh, I could do like the middle ring in the uh, center of the body, like one color. And then the side rings, uh, either, like one of either two other colors. Or maybe like two black and one white or something like that. And then uh, the tail, yeah, more or less the same. Just kind of the middle band of it is one color and the rest is the other colors. And so we have black and steel. We have stainless steel, which is uh, silver, which is only two colors. However, if I move to titanium for that dragon and get it with uh, anodized, no, not anodized, yeah, anodized uh, titanium, then I could get, say, like purple one side and, say, like orange another side and blue another side, or just straight up plain silver another side. Because you can get a whole lot of different colors for titanium, which is awesome. So my might, might go in that direction, not entirely certain. Also, we've got three of our legs finished here. I'm just kind of uh, pre-closing some more rings so we can get our fourth. Oh, we are so close. We need 15 closed rings, and uh, or 15 open rings and 12 closed rings. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven. And twelve. Smooth that out. Beautiful. I don't think we have 15 open ones. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Thirteen. Fourteen. Oh, we're getting closer. Fifteen. Okay, we'll put these back. And now let's make us one final dragon leg. And we fin we'll finagle these onto our dragon, onto Daryl and Daryl here. And then she'll get her, she, and then they'll get their uh, clasp and signature. Oh, their tattoo. Oh, well, I'm prattling here, since it seems to be a bit of a talkative uh, episode. I would love to get, like, facial tattoos. Like, if I lived in a society where getting a face tattoo didn't cost me my job, that's literally the only reason I would not, is because work. Then I would, in a heartbeat, I would get my face tattooed in some manner or another. And, you know, all kinds of visible tattoos. I'd be one of those types that have, like, you know, three quarters of my body tattooed. But I work in healthcare, which technically shouldn't matter, but... <laughs> let's let's be realistic here. As much as I'd love to think that they can't be biased, the second you go to an interview and have uh, visible tattoos, you better hope that they have a really, really open mind, otherwise you're wasting your time. So while I'd love to, I don't want to put that risk on my uh, income. If I become an artist full-time, like, you know, big enough that I can support myself down the road and everything like that off of however, if I believe that I will be successful for the rest of my life off of my art, no hesitation, I would end up being covered in tattoos. 
My meow is kind of the start of that. My absolutely visible, impossible to hide tattoo. I got it there specifically for that. I've been told that a lot of tattoo artists won't even do fingers because they're so visible and it's also kind of a uh, will this heal properly type of area of the body like you know it, it's a little bit sketchy whether they'll uh, blur out or not. So mine actually did have a few minor problems with that uh, the M part of it on the pinky blurred out more than the uh, EOW. But uh, I got like so the EOW was like thinner lettering than the M. So I went back and got it touched up because you get tattoo touch-ups. And where was I going with that? Yeah, so uh, now it looks all awesome and stuff. I technically want the top two bars of the W done up uh, just, just slightly more. Not sure if I'll actually bother asking a tattoo artist to like, hey, can you do like three millimeters here and two millimeters here? I might yet, I might. I did ask that of my last tattoo artist, but uh, I completely forgot. Like, you know, by the time we got to the end of the main tattoo, which is the one on my ankle. It's uh, prairie flowers. I have a thistle on me. <laughs> I want to get a grasshopper. I need a grasshopper. I need a crow. Possibly a live one. Something cat-based. Well, okay, I have my meow. That's pretty cat-based. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. A lot more things down in the future. I'm going to get rosary beads around my wrist if that becomes an option. Like, say, when I uh, run off uh, to Montreal for my bottom surgery, I'm going to get rosary beads tattooed around my wrist. And, uh, yeah, basically just run with that. Yeah, the problem of society. Visible tattoos. I think rosary beads would generally be fine. I suppose I have to be careful what countries I fly to, like if they're like predominantly anti-Christian or something like that, like I don't even know Saudi Arabia or one of the mean countries nowadays. It's even kind of mean to say mean, because they're mean because the US is bombing the ever-loving piss out of them, so of course they're going to be upset. And they might be associating with uh, religion as well, because you know, the war and religion have been like buddy-buddy since the dawn of time. That's kind of sad, ain't it? All religions preach peace. Most wars are about religion. What is with that? That's something worth posting, eh? Give me two seconds to do this quick thing here. It's hard to say that because someone's going to shout it down. No, most wars aren't about religion. Not nowadays, but they used to be. Ugh, the pedantic types. I suppose I can just kind of ignore them. There we go. Post that online for funsies. Just a ponderance, like, what a dichotomy there of all possible things. <clears throat> dichotomy, is that the right word? I gotta Google search that one.
I guess that uh, statement would be the most accurate uh, when you just kind of uh, tack on pre-industrial. Okay, since the 1950s, more or less all wars have been about, say, oil or water or whatever other resource, gold, that something a place has. But prior to just wanting stuff to make stuff, <laughs> it's been religion. Or territory. Just bickering for, I want more of this and I'm going to take it from you. <sighs> Usually in the name of their lord. <laughs> okay, we have four legs and we have a dragon that needs four legs. Let's go and give them to you, little fellas. Okay, this will do. Now this part's going to be a little bit uncommon as compared to, say, a two-headed dragon, because the ring arrangement uh, right at the top of the dragon is in no way, shape, or form even closely related to the uh, one-headed dragons. So we kind of go to ad-lib what we're doing here. Basically just, okay, that arc looks like it would uh, look good connected right about there. The other part of this shoulder, uh, I'm seeing you connected right over here. That'd look pretty decent. Nope, come on. No, 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 don't drop it. Go through. And through. And I kind of have this thing where the, I don't like the arm rings connected to a single ring. It's got to be connected to a double ring of some sort. So that's just kind of a me thing. Hmm. Is there a better place to attach that or am I more or less stuck there? What about through the eyelet here? Maybe through the eye. Provided I get it through both of those rings. I'm pretty sure my phone just buzzed at me. Uh, I hear your phone. Really hear us, yeah? Really doesn't care. Okay, that's decent. That's decent. There we go, one down, second leg, oh we're getting close, we're getting close D&D, &D. <laughs> C and C and D&D, &D. C and C and D&D and D are walking through the street, they see an ice cream vendor, they go, let's go have a treat, we're gonna need four cones, cause there are four of us, but only two bodies, that's just how it goes. <laughs> okay, yeah. you are going through. What's going on here? Okay, yeah, you are going through that spot. Come on. Yeah, there you go. Oh, steady. Well, now I can get a good look at this and make sure it's going through the same place. Yep. Woo! You are a two-armed dragon! Ooh, they're excited. Two heads, they get twice as excited. Okay. Third leg. Oh, we're getting close now. We are getting close now. Hmm. 
Yeah, there we go. Okay, you come here. Okay. You are going through there. Oh, oh you got three of your legs. Oh, what you gonna do? Oh, you're gonna tear on the apartment is what you're gonna do. You're gonna muck about with your friend once you meet her. Oh, you're gonna like that. The dragons of exuberance and contemplation. Maybe that's what you are. Exuberance and contemplation. Maybe, maybe, maybe. I don't know if I want their, uh, like the words for their personality. Like I like exuberance and contemplation. That pretty well fits, I think. But like as uh, compared to the characters that they're named after, the Daryl and Daryl, like, uh, I mean, you need to open up a thesaurus and see, like, hey, from what I saw of that little clip, these are kind of, uh, you know, hillbilly types, kind of a little bit slower. I can see them being uh, very contemplative, but also getting really excited about things. So, like, what are their personalities and what words can I use from that? Oh, come here. Come here. Okay, let's just compare it to C and C. Yeah, that looks right about perfect. Something about this back leg looked off for some reason. Nope, that is just about as bang on as it gets. There we go. Woo! You need your clasp. Oh, they love to go through their own clasps. They kind of poke it a whole lot, then I pull it out. Every dragon gets one last ring, the three sixteenths. So we'll put your clasp on here. Then your signature. Ooh, it's almost there. It's almost there. Do you want to be worn? Oh, he wants to be worn. Both heads connected, one head connected. They were kind of deciding for a second there. Yeah, they belong together, they decided. Funny that. Probably a good thing. Yay! Now the two dragons are born. Okay, now let's take you off. We have a signature to give you, and you were supposed to be worn by someone else. I thought I felt a slight scratch. Hmm. Okay, well, I 
smoothed out that weathering there. Typically speaking, even like a 20th of a millimeter off, you're going to be able to like physically feel. And I'll kind of touch it up as I go. Come in there every so often if she says something and touch it up. Do you need a signature? Albert, come here. We need your knife. Okay, where do you want it? Right there. Right there. Okay, don't be so jumpy here. This is only going to sting for like two seconds. Come on, we're shredding up a little bit. Get over there. There we go. Woo! That's awesome. That is awesome. Oh, so we have now finished our dragon. Oh. That's awesome. <laughs> Just the all. <laughs> okay, a few dragons flag off somewhere, and I just got a notification of some sort or another. Okay, so that looks like a wonderful place to wrap up here. We got a dragon finished. I've got a dragon adoption scroll to make. It's just afternoon, and I've got a few hours to do so. So have a wonderful day, y'all.